Now it's time to start preparing and training for the AKC Novice Obedience Routine. First, I want to quickly go over the requirements and the max score that you can receive for each exercise. We have the heel on leash and figure eight, that's worth 40 points. Stand for examination worth 30 points. Heel free worth 40 points. Recall worth 30 points. Sit stay and get your leash worth 30 points. And group exercise sit and down stay worth 30 points for a possible total of 200 points. In today's video, we'll discuss in detail how to train for the healing portion as well as the halts and right about turns in the AKC Novice Obedience Routine. One of the first things that the judges will look for is the ability of the dog and the handler to work together as a team, just like I've talked about in many of my other videos. When you enter the ring, you'll walk to the starting location with your dog on a loose leash. Once you stop, your dog should sit next to you in the proper heel position. You can have the leash in either hand or in both, but your hands should be held in a natural position. Keep in mind that if the leash gets tight or if you use an extra command or signals, you'll be pointed for that. First, the judge will ask you if you're ready. Once you say yes or ready, or you give them a nod or something like that, then you'll be told forward and the judge will direct you throughout the entire routine so you don't have to memorize anything. This exercise consists of healing forward at a normal pace, slow pace, fast pace. You'll also have to do halt, right turn, left turn, and about turns. All of the about turns will be right about turns so you don't have to worry about left about turns for this exercise. For the pace changes, they need to be noticeable. So fast, you need to pick up your pace and slow, you need to slow down. It has to be noticeable to the judge. The judge will only order halts and turns when you're moving at a normal speed. And keep in mind that turns and halts can be repeated, so it's important to make sure those are really solid before competing. All of the other commands can be given in any sequence, so uh, just be aware of that. And the judge should make the healing pattern the same for all the dogs to ensure that the testing is fair. When the judge says forward, you can give a command or signal to your dog, and you'll start healing forward. Again, your dog should be close to your left side without swinging wide, lagging, forging, or crowding. Basically, the dog should maintain the same position the entire time. Look at it as a stay command that's mobile. That also doesn't interfere with your movement at all. This can usually be a problem if your dog tends to crowd or push into you while you're healing. When the judge tells you to halt, you must come to a stop. Usually one or two extra paces to slow down won't be pointed. When you halt, your dog should automatically sit in the proper heel position without any additional movement. From the halt position, the dog should remain still in that position until you command the dog to move forward on the judge's order. Once this healing portion of the routine is completed, the judge will say, exercise finished. Now, let's go over how you can lose points. One, if you have to control your dog with the leash, if you correct with the leash or adjust to the dog's pace, you'll receive a NQ, which is a non-qualifying score. Two, you'll lose points for additional commands or signals to heal, or for not making the pace changes noticeable enough for the judge. The number of points you lose will depend on how extreme or minor the mistakes are. And three, you can also lose points for lagging, healing wide, forging, the dog's crowding, poor sits such as a crooked or crowded sit, if the dog fails to sit at the halts, or any other healing imperfections. Again, the number of points that you lose will determine or will depend really on how extreme or minor the mistakes that you are making according to the judge. So now we have a good idea of what's needed to successfully pass the requirements. Let's go over a training plan for each portion. First, the healing command with pace changes, halts, and right about turns. Since halts and turns are given at a normal pace, this is when we're walking forward at a normal pace with our dog in heel position. So what should this look like? Since we're working on competition precision type obedience, the exercises that we're going to be working on today, if I were to break it down into detail and explain exactly what I'm doing in each step, this video would be over an hour long. Lucky for you, I've already done that in multiple videos. So if you need to, I would recommend going back to these videos and watching each one. 
What I'm going to be doing today is I'm just going to be working with my dog on every single one of the steps that you will find in that video. So this could be a quick reference as to what it is that you're working on and what you're trying to accomplish with your own dog. Let's get started. One of the very first things that I do with every single dog that I train is what's known as engagement training. This is when we are paying our dogs for staying engaged and maintaining focus on us while at the same time we can teach them a position. So here I'm gonna be working on the, the perfect sit front position as well as getting her to focus on my face and not my hands. In the beginning, our dogs will be looking at our hands because that's where they know the food is coming from. But if you'll notice in this next portion of the video, I get her to look at my face while moving my hands away from the line of sight of my face. So this shows me that she's able to continue and look at my face even while my hands are doing other things such as moving away, up and down, providing an additional distraction. This takes a little bit of time to get it to the point that you're gonna see in this video, but I do break it down in more detail in my video solidifying the heel position. Let's check it out. Yes. Free. What? Yes. Very nice, Ari. Yes. Yes. Very good. Excellent. Come. In this portion of the video, I'm doing the backwards follow exercise. In the beginning, you're going to need to do continual reinforcement. Make sure you keep your hands up against your body while giving the rewards because you want your dog to maintain a very close position as we're walking backwards. If you reward them with your hand extended, then they're not going to be as close to you when you're doing the backwards follow exercise. When you come to stop, simply lift up on your hands, which will cue your dog to sit, and then you can give your dog a reward and go right back into the backwards follow exercise. Eventually, you wanna to get to the point where you can walk backwards, your dog continues to follow you, and you can have your hands behind your back. Let's check it out. Free. Very good. Come. Very nice, Ari. Good girl. Good girl. Come. Good. Free. Very nice. Come. Very nice, sorry. Yes. Now we're going to be working on getting our dog to look up at our face when they're in heel position. What you want to do is place your dog in the heel position and then the same stuff that we did when our dog was in the sit front position, we're going to do while our dog's in the heel position. We'll start with keeping our hands by our face, rewarding our dog for looking up in that direction, and then we're going to start to move our hand away from our face. When our dog looks at us, we mark the moment they're looking at us and then we deliver the reward and then we continue to do this up until the point where our dog will continue Continue looking at our face. Yes. Yes. Notice that I reward her with my right hand. The reason for that is because she's anticipating the reward coming from my left hand, so I don't want to reward her from my left hand because then it might start causing her to look slightly left, so that's why I reach over and I reward with my right. Keeping in mind reward placement is very important when we're doing precision obedience. Yes. Yes. Free. 
Good girl. Nice job. Climb. Heel. Now I'm going to be working on what's known as solidifying the heel position, also known as doodling. It's very simple. What you wanna do, I like to use a climb. You can also just tell your dog to sit or to down. Then you're going to find a random position and call your dog into heel. This helps your dog find the heel position regardless of where they are in reference to your position. Free. Climb. This next one you're gonna see, she's a little sloppy, so I continue to help her with luring as well as using that power steering that I've talked about before until she's able to get into the position. And even though she doesn't do a great job finding the position and I even have to tell her to sit, I still reward her afterwards because if a dog is struggling, we do wanna reward them for putting in effort. If you don't reward them because it doesn't look as good as you want it to look, then you're gonna find that your dog is going to quickly become more and more demotivated so I try to increase or keep that motivation high even if the dog's not doing a great job as long as they're trying and they're working towards what it is I'm trying to get them to do Heel. so you'll see what I mean sit free climb Heel. Free. Good. Climb. Heel. Free. Very nice. Climb. Heel. Very good, Ari. Nice job. Now we're going to be working on the center command. I like to place my dog in the center position and then work on that engagement the same way we did when our dog's in the heel position as well as the sit front position. Once I'm able to get my dog to understand that they have to maintain the center position and look up at my face, then we'll start to walk with our dog. I like to walk in multiple directions, forward, backward, left, right. I like to work on my about turns, right about turn, left about turn, left turn, right turn, because our legs help create a barrier, which makes it much easier for our dogs to accomplish these movements. And that's going to transfer over very nicely into our focused heel. Yes. Very nice. Yes. Excellent, Ari. Free. Good girl. Good. Good job. Yes. Excellent. Nice work. Free. Very good. Before having my dog walk and maintain the center position, I also like to get my dog to understand how to pivot in place. You could do that using a bowl, but you can also do that just by pivoting the way that I'm gonna be demonstrating in this portion of the video. Free. Very good. Free. Excellent. Nice job, Ari. Good girl. Very good. Free. Good girl. This is also a good opportunity to work on your pace changes. Whatever competitive obedience routine that you're working on, whatever they require within that routine, you should be practicing while your dog's in set ah, position, ah, such ah. as our pace changes, our left turn, our right turn, our about turn, and our halts. Excellent work, Ari. Free. Good.
Now I'm working on getting my dog to walk backwards. This is much easier to teach than you may think. First, we walk towards our dog with our hands closed. That will normally get them to walk backwards. When you first start teaching this, the very first step that your dog takes, mark and reward that. As your dog starts to understand it more, then you can ask for more and more steps. And then eventually, if you want, you can add a command. The more body awareness and rear end awareness our dogs have, the better they're going to be at any sort of precision obedience that we ask them to perform. Free. Very nice. Free. Good girl. Free. Very good, Ari. Back. Free. Good. Back. Free. Very nice. Back. <coughs> Free. Good girl. Back. <coughs> Free. Very nice. Down. Come. Free. Good. Come. Now I'm using the backwards follow exercise to transition my dog into the proper heel position. By going from the backwards follow exercise into the heel position, it helps keep our dogs straight. Without this portion of the training, if we skip this, there is a good possibility that our dogs may end up being a little bit more crooked when they're in the heel position. So it's definitely worth your time to invest in this exercise and get good at transitioning your dog from that backwards follow right into that perfect heel position. Free. Very nice. Come. Free. Very good. Down. Our heel. Now we're going to be using our power steering or our luring to work on our focused heel. During this portion of the training, I pretty much am using continual reinforcement. I'm walking and I'm feeding the dog almost the entire time. In the beginning, our dogs aren't even really going to know what they're doing, but it is going to be helping them with that muscle memory, which is going to make it much easier when we do start asking them to walk in our focused heel position without that continual reinforcement. So this should be fun. I like to incorporate all kinds of different things while I'm doing this, whether I'm trying to pivot in place, I'm turning left, I'm turning right, I'm walking backwards. I'm placing my dog into different commanded positions, sit down, all these different things we can do while we're doing this power steering, working on our dog, maintaining that focused heel position. Free. Good. Free. Very nice. Good girl. Free. Very good. Heel. Free. Very nice. Now in this section of the video, I'm working on getting my dog to walk while in heel position. Heel. What we do for this exercise is we place our dog in a sitting position in our heel position. Then we give the command heel. After we give the command heel, we bring our hand up and we lure our dog with our hands while we start to walk forward. Once we're ready to stop, we lure them into the sit and then we mark and reward. We can have our hand come in from different positions, whether it's on the outside of our dog's head while it's hanging down by our side or what I like to do as well is keep my hand behind my back and then when I say heel I bring my hand over my dog's head which will get my dog to anticipate my hand coming over her head so she'll look up when I say heel anticipating my hand to come to that position which will give us that really nice focused heel look. Free. Very good Ari. Heel. Free. Nice work. Are right, you heel? Heel. Free. Very good. 
Now we're gonna start asking our dogs to walk in heel position without that continual reinforcement. Start with very short distances, and as your dog gets better, you can ask for more paces, but in the very beginning, only a few steps, and it's also good to change the amount of steps that you do each time. So you may take three steps the first time, six steps the second time, two steps the third time, and so on. By making it random, it's going to make it more interesting and more fun for our dogs. Heel. Free. Nice job. Very good, Ari. Heel. Heel. Free. Very good. Come on, Ari. Heel. Free. Very good. Heel. Free. Very good, Ari. Nice job. Heel. Now we're going to be working on our pace changes. In the AKC novice obedience routine, they're only gonna call you into a slow pace or a fast pace while you're in a normal pace. You're not gonna go from slow to fast or fast to slow. It will always be normal to slow, back to normal, normal to fast, back to normal. However, I do like teaching my dog all kinds of different paces regardless of which pace I'm currently in as I transition into the next pace. It's just getting our dogs really good at staying in our heel position regardless of what pace we are at. We can help them maintain this by giving them those continual reinforcement, treating them quite a bit, and also making it fun by using that engagement. A lot of people like to incorporate toys during this part of their training because it gets their dog a little bit more motivated and pumped up to do this exercise. Heel. Free. Good girl. Heel. Free. Very good, Ari. Heel. Free. Good. Heel. Heel. Free. Good. Heel. Heel, heel. And you are allowed to recommand heel when you go into a new pace. So when they tell you fast pace, you can say heel before you increase your speed. And when they tell you slow pace, you can say heel when you decrease your speed, letting your dog know something's about to take place. Free. Nice work, Ari. Heel. Good girl. Good, very good, Ari. Free, very good. Down, excellent. Heel. Now we wanna work on what I like to call the spiral technique. This is where we ask our dog to heel as we go from a large circle into a smaller circle until we're eventually pivoting in place. This is going to make it very easy when we start asking our dog to do the right about turn. Good. Good girl. Very good. Good, very good. During this step in the training, we're gonna start introducing our dog to the right about turn. Heel. You're gonna see as I do this, I like to step forward with my left leg, and then I use my lure to guide my dog around my leg, staying tight close to my body. This is going to help keep our dog tight and close when we do that right about turn, which will prevent the lagging, and it'll also teach our dog to increase the speed when we do our right about turns, because in order for our dogs to maintain proper heel position as we do our right about turn, they have to increase speed. And these techniques that I'm about to demonstrate with Ari will help your dog understand that and will make your right about turns look very nice. Good girl. Heel. Good. Ari, right, heel. Good girl. Good. 
very good. Free. Good. Go climb. When you're doing your right about turns, it helps to focus on your footwork, which is going to help increase your dog's overall score to minimize losing any additional points. When you're going to step to do your right about turn, the easy way for me to remember it is if I know I'm doing a right about turn, right turn, left about turn, or left turn, the last foot that I do a full normal step is the foot in the direction that I'm stepping. So for my right about turn, I will step with my right foot. Then my left foot comes around almost making a T-shape with my two feet. And then my right foot will pivot back facing in the opposite direction. And then I'll step with a full left foot step. So again, I'm going to the right. So last step, boom, we make that T-shape, we turn, and then we step again. So right, left, right, left. If I'm doing a left turn or left about turn, it's going to be left, then we make the T, then we turn, and then we step. We have to make sure we are on a straight line. If I'm doing a left turn, same thing, but instead of pivoting around to go the opposite direction that I just came, I'm going to turn and step in the direction that I'm going. So it should look like this. We step with our left, turn with our right, step with our left and then we go into that direction with our right turn we step with the right turn with the left step with the right when doing our left and right turns by simply teaching our dog left about turns and right about turns it makes our left and right turns very very easy so i spend a lot of time working on my left and right about turns before i even start focusing on my right or left turns because if they can do the left and right about turn they can definitely do the left and right turn heel before doing this step you want to make sure your dog can do a nice sit while doing the backwards follow exercise as well as a nice sit while doing the center position if you have that down now we can start introducing the automatic sit when halted there's three different ways that i like to teach this one i simply lure the dog into the sit position when i come to a stop or I can tell the dog to sit every time I come to a stop. And last but not least, we can use the leash pressure to guide our dog into the sit position. You wanna make sure when you're doing this, you reward your dog when they're in a proper heel position as you come to a halt. If you stop and your dog is lagging or forging, simply walk forward, readjust, and then reward your dog when they're in proper heel position. Free. Good. Heel. Good. Heel. Sit. Free. Good. Heel. Heel. Free. Very nice. Come on, Ari. Heel. Whichever one of these techniques you decide to use for your dog, just continue to do Heel. it up until the point where your dog will start to automatically sit without that additional assistance. Remember, our dogs learn through pattern recognition. If they know that every time when you come to a stop, you're going to have them sit, then they will do that automatically. Free. Good girl. Next week, we'll be working on our left and right turns for the AKC Novice Routine, as well as proper footwork. I hope everyone enjoyed today's video. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below or let me know if you have any questions. If you want one-on-one -on -one help, I do offer in-person training as well as Zoom training sessions. If you'd like to support the channel, you can, of course, by liking, subscribing. You could also become a patron or ordering a copy of my dog training manual, getting one of my shirts or shopping at either of my stores, and of course, sharing these videos. Thank you again and I will see everyone next week.